Hello, I'm Scott Hunt, and thank you for joining us for our first In-Depth Insider, where we take a look at some of the major issues facing the air transportation industry. And today we're going to focus on CO2 emissions and its impact on airlines. And we have joining us Peter Birdie, who is a director for the Sabre Airline Solutions Consulting Group. Peter's written extensively about environmental issues, and he's also worked with airlines to help them improve their fuel consumption. So, Peter, um, obviously CO2 is something that's really, you know, on the minds of airline executives today. Um, what is it that airlines should prepare for in terms of CO2 emissions? Well, airlines have actually been preparing for quite some time, Scott. Uh, legislation was passed in the EU at the end of 2008 requiring uh, all airlines that fly into the EU, whether they're EU-based or not, to begin to uh, record their emissions starting in 2010. It affects their bottom line effective in 2012 when they actually start to uh, pay for the emissions that they're using in that year, and then it goes into the bank in 2013. Uh, during this time, of course, uh, airlines will have to figure out a way to deal with that additional cost. Likely, it'll go back on, on the consumer in the form of some sort of a tax on aviation. What that really means, I believe, is that we may see the end of really cheap air transportation at that point. And you'd shared with me earlier some figures about the cost from, for just like one flight from, from New York to London. Um, what were some of those figures? Well, if you take an annual round trip from JFK to London Heathrow, say with Boeing 747-400, the emissions that are consumed by that round trip would cost about 2 million euros on today's CO2 levels. Very expensive. Now, the EU has offered airlines an 85% incentive. In other words, they get 85% of their emissions for free when they file their reports. So, in other words, instead of paying 2 million euros, that airline would end up paying about 300,000 euros. Big savings, but nevertheless an, ad an added cost for the airline. But definitely a certain of a big incentive to, to do that. What happens if airlines don't report their emissions? Well, airlines will be faced with fines if they don't report. So, again, with the incentive for them to do so with 85% free emissions coming back to them, I think they're all aware of the benefit of doing so. So a little bit of extra administrative work will really pay off on their part. What are some of the things that airlines can do right now in terms of uh, CO2 emissions? Well, first of all, if you think about where do CO2 emissions come from, they're really generated by burning fuel. So airlines are getting smarter about how they use fuel. Uh, manufacturers are also being smarter about how they develop the technology to deliver a more efficient uh, engine. So we've seen advances in engine development for the last 40 years, basically, to the point where starting with the Boeing 787, the Airbus 350, the C-Series by Bombardier, we're about at the end of technology in terms of today's engine production that you can squeeze that last bit of fuel efficiency out of. So I think uh, what that means is that airlines will now, once they have these new modern and very efficient uh, aircraft, will have to use them more efficiently. And that means um, flying them smarter, making fuel part of every single day operation so that they can operate as efficiently as possible. So if we could get you to look into the crystal ball a little bit and into the future, what do you see the, uh, this issue having impact five, ten years or, or beyond? I think beyond ten years we're looking at the possibility of adding biofuels to the equation. Biofuels are very exciting because they're basically a drop-in fuel. You don't have to change the technology on an airplane, which is really great because that means the airplanes are ready to go. All you need is the fuel ready to go. So uh, biofuels are great because if you take something like algae or some of the other uh, crops that are being explored today, um, they're very efficient in terms of generating uh, oxygen and, st and consuming CO2 while they're being while they're growing, and then while they're being uh, produced into fuel, we'll see that fuel, of course, get consumed. So they'll be closer to sustainable uh, zero emission, ultimately, is the target for biofuels. Whether we'll get there or not will be yet to be seen. Uh, well, how about Sabre, uh, Sabre Holdings and Sabre Allen Solutions? What are some of the things that um, the company is doing? Well, first of all, Sabre is very committed toward the environment, both from a company perspective as well as the individuals that work there. On the tool side, we're, we are putting and have been working on putting carbon into all of the tools that make sense. So if you're looking at dispatching, uh, we'll now have the capability to show you what kind of CO2 you'll be producing. We're working with airlines to show them 
how to use fuel more efficiently, and we'll be doing more of, of that later on. We're looking at using close-in refleeting with our tools so that on day of departure, the demand that's actually showing up for that flight will be assigned the right aircraft size to that demand so that we'll see really efficient match of supply and demand, which in turn means more efficient fuel consumption and less CO2. On top of that, I think uh, we'll be using tools to help airlines decide on what fleet types they should be looking at, how to develop their, their uh, networks more efficiently as well. All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter, and thank you for joining us. If you have any more questions about carbon emissions or how it impacts your airlines or what you can do, please feel free to contact Peter at peter.birdie at sabre.com.